Hello YouTubers, my name is Ben Shefka and welcome to my YouTube channel. I have got myself a project, which you probably already know about since it's the title of the video, but I have got myself a Farmall Regular from my grandfather. It was built in 1928 and he bought it with the family farm, which he bought when he got married. I don't even know when that was, but he used it as a pump tractor he would run the water pump on it for the fields to water the fields and he's had it parked on fence row for about probably more than 50 years my mom has told me stories that she, when she was a little kid she used to play on it and it didn't even run then so well that's the project that i've got myself into i'll dive into more detail on the story of it later but uh this channel mainly is going to be focusing on the restoration of tractors, garden tractors, engines, whatever, whatever I've got planned. And, uh, I've got, well, I've already started this project and I've been getting a lot of help from a YouTube, a fellow YouTuber on this channel, or not on this channel, but I've been getting help from a fellow YouTuber by the name of Ken Christofferson or Kenny Kizzle as he's known on YouTube and uh, I live in Nebraska he lives in Minnesota so we've been emailing back and forth on how to try and get this tractor running and he's been or he has restored or fixed repaired whatever a Farmall F20 which is close to what the Farmall regular I'm dealing with is like so, since he's been through it, I've been talking to him about some things and having him help me out a little bit. So, Ken, if you're watching this video, thank you very much. And I'll get back to you. Trust me, I will. But, I will guess there's nothing left but to show you the tractor and what all I've done. And I'll get right back to you. Alright? Alright, guys, we're down at the tractor at the 1928 Farmall Regular and get you a glimpse of my messy shop area but and all the wood pieces around here as you can see my dad's doing a little carpentry putting some uh, shelving in downstairs so just letting you know that's why all the sawdust is on the floor and all that stuff alright so we're back at the, the tractor here and you know fans stuff like that this motor when I got it it was stuck Whoop. About to drop my flashlight when I got it this tractor was stuck as probably most of you would assume anyway after sitting for 50 years so uh, the cylinder walls are pretty scraped up especially on number one here and you can see it's my camera will focus here. Maybe it won't. But whatever. I'm using my phone, so the quality is probably not going to be very good, unfortunately. But it's what I got to work with. So, as you can see, the top of this sleeve is incredibly pitted. It is in really bad shape, and the cylinder walls, too, are in really bad shape. They got grooves in them from where the rings sat for many many years so and it's kind of gummed up on here too all that water that was in this engine all that debris and crap and that's a valve guide I think for one of the push rods maybe I don't even know but the from ranking which one, which uh, cylinders were best, it goes from left to right. Uh, this one wasn't very, it wasn't too bad. The piston came out quite easy. It's still a little scraped up. Probably needs to be, it actually, yeah, it really needs to be honed. I'll see if uh, it has a ridge on the top or anything. I don't think it, it might. No, there's no ridge on the top, so that's good, I think. I'm assuming this one's not bad either but it does have score marks as you can see right there 
down there and all these all these uh, sweeves had uh, what do you call them? what do you call it I had ATF and automatic transmission fluid and acetone in them so there's that and then this one's not this cylinder ain't bad either the top of this piston it looks like it's pitted but it's not it's just carbon deposits unlike this one that's just completely gone and has grooves into into it so let's see if you can see that there yeah it's it's quite bad the rest of them don't have the grooves in them so I'll probably just hone them out and you know, I'll pull them I'll pull them first put our rigs in them and then hone them but this one I'm gonna have to replace because I'm not gonna risk any wear on the piston rings so there's that the motor is loose now I had to, the pistons weren't what was getting it stuck I mean they probably were at first but I had you know the acetone and ATF mix in there for a good month and a half before they broke loose and this one I had to pound out pretty much because it was it was a pain the other ones came free though real easy all right but my main pain was oh well, that's the toolbox serial tag is gone unfortunately but the main pain that I had was this sucker right there flywheel this was a pain this comp this whole entire bell housing was filled with mouse crap completely filled to the brim with mouse crap it was horrible absolutely horrible and this this is a new flywheel but uh the other flywheel it was the the bowl shaped flywheel the original that had the multiple disc clutch in it yeah that clutch has been destroyed pretty much by mice and that flywheel has been too but it was stuck beyond stuck and there was nothing I could do I had to pull that damn flywheel out before I could get this thing unstuck I'll show some pictures of it here right now all right so now that we're back here this flywheel I got from a junkyard Stromps called a junkyard called um, Stromps up in Spalding Nebraska really good people to help you out they do whatever you need to fund whatever part you need and they have about a gajillion tractors there to choose from so if you're ever in the area and you need tractor parts for old tractors and stuff go to them because they will help you find everything literally everything but as you can see I haven't even got this flywheel pushed in all the way it's probably about a quarter of the way or halfway uh, I'll show you a picture of the flywheel puller here too pretty quick right now alright since you're back uh, that flywheel nut that was there too that was absolute hell to get out it took me a good month or two and it broke two of my eight to ten foot long bro breaker bars and I had to the nut was a three and a half inch nut six point and actually I have it in here it was absolutely horrible Toolbox, as you can see, old sediment bowl. But this is the original nut that was on this tractor. Uh, I had this, as you see, there's a nice big slit through it. So, why will my camera not focus? But this was on the end of that crank holding that uh, flywheel on three and a half inches from top to bottom and I had to cut it to get it off I tried heat I tried long ass breaker bars and I had this 
uh, socket. Three and a half inches, six point, as you can see. And along with that, I had this beast, three quarter inch a ratchet. I'm glad this didn't break getting that thing off. But it was a pain. It was an, a complete and utter pain. But anyway, continuing on. You know, it's, it's kind of weathered down since it's been sitting for so long. Rems aren't in, well, they're in okay shape. They're not, they've been sitting out for so long. Them old tires that were on here, they were nasty and cracked and very destroyed. So, but it's a round spoke, as you can see. I had this, I had this rim off here, not too far back because this brake was stuck on it. It was pretty much stuck on that, uh, I don't remember what it's called now, brake drum right there. So I got that all freed up and it's raring to go now. The other one's got a brake lock on it which is set right now so it won't roll around to move on me. But there's that and then there's the shifter. It's kind of stiff because, well, it's winter and it's cold. It's probably around 20 degrees in here, day and night. But I do have a problem with it. Occasionally it won't go into gear, into a certain gear. And then when I can get it in that gear, I won't be able to get into another gear, which is kind of odd. I'll try and show you right now. See? I can't get it. Sorry for this. But I can't get it into I can't get it into reverse, which is absolutely horrible. We'll see if I can get it into third here. And that one went in. That's good. Switch hands here. Uh, I can't see that very well, can you? I'll try and position that where you can see. A little better, all right. And then, uh, see, I can't get into that one now. Can't get into what is that second? But I can get into. See if I can get the first now. See, I can get into first. Let's see if I can get her reverse. Let's see if I can get into first now. I can get into first. Now I can get into second and third. And now I can't get into first. I can get to any other one. And now I can't get into second, which is. But yeah, you see how that goes. It's not fun. You know, and you got the control lever up here, which was stuck. I have it freed now. I have the oil pan, I'll show you in a minute with the seat. That backrest on there, that is not original. That came off of a rock island, which I don't even know how that got on there. Probably from the previous owners that uh, my grandpa got this tractor from. Got the bull seat, my gloves, <laughs> bunch of random nuts and bolts, stuff like that. And then the gas tank's missing, as you can see. It's right over there. And the starter tank, that's in the other shop I have in. It's in the other shop right now. But that one had a nice big chunk out of it. Rusted through, just completely gone, eaten up. But there's the flywheel. Better look of it. The engine's not stuck or anything. Transmission is good, pretty much, for the most part. But, you see that there. I'll go around here. I'll shut this flashlight off now. Oh, fan. Oop. As you can see, it's 
in prime shape. Fan belt was almost completely gone, but you can see that there. Got your governor here, where you put your oil in here. I haven't cracked that open yet. I still need to. I have all this stuff off, but now the problem I'm facing right now is, okay, got to pull that off. I'll get around on this side. See if I can. All right. My problem is now I cannot drive this pin out. It is absolutely stuck. I've got it as far as I can get. Get It's level with the casting right there. There was a, a nut or a little bolt right there, I should say. Uh, you know. I pulled that out. I even heated this up so many times. And I got it that far and I can't get it any further. So I really need your help on that to get this whole crankcase off. But I've got that nut loose. I need to pull this pulley off so I can get into there and clean all that crap up. But as. You okay, bud? Hairball, but uh, I still need to crack into that governor and check everything out. And then uh, this was on the gas tank earlier. Don't need that. Uh, this goes to the carburetor. Carburetor's on the workbench over there. A couple pieces. And then this inlet to water is just completely gummed up, probably from mice again. Looks like a little mass nest back in there. If you can see that. And then you got the in the internal, the engine, front main bearing. Looks so good, sounds good. Probably not gonna mess around with that. Probably not gonna take this crankshaft out either. Probably just polish everything up and leave it as is. And then you got the rear one. I just oiled this thing, so it's eh, it turns okay. I just oiled it with PB Blaster for now. If you guys know how to properly oil these things, please tell me because I've been struggling with that for too long. Got your camshaft in there, got your lifters right there. Let's see if I can get you a better look in there. Had your oil pump right here, which was run by the cam. Uh, I can't see that. But there's that. Crankshaft. Need to polish up them journals. But yeah, it's loose, so that's good. And then you got this. She needs to polish, need to pull them sleeves. If you guys have any insight on how to pull sleeves, please tell me. I know I know I need to make a, a puller, but I don't know how to well, pull them. I know you need a, a puck and a puller. I have the size written down. I'll put it in the description. But I just want to get these pulled cheaply. <laughs> as cheap as physically possible. I don't want to have to go to a machine shop and have them do it and then pay a ridiculous amount of money just for that. But I might have to. So we'll see how that goes. Got your brake cable. Runs along there. Back to this brake. Got your clutch pedal. Not connected. Miscellaneous nuts and bolts. These rods, these thre this threaded rod right here is 5 8 I used that to pull the flywheel along with that bottle jack down there. 12, 12 ton bottle jack. Got that. It's locked in place. The brake is right now. Not going to mess with that. Let's see if I can get you a good view of the round spokes of there. And yeah, the front, oh yeah, the front rim on this thing, it's cut off steel. I got this from Stromps also. The, there was only one on it originally that I found, and that rim is completely battered to crap. So I had to go out there and find some new bearings and put a whole new rim on there. 
and this one came with the tire on it and I mean this tire this tire is shot and needs to be replaced and everything I just used it to move it move this tractor from the shop out there to this shop right here because it's a lot warmer I have electricity and power and you know I can see kind of but you know got that stuff here got a model number here don't know if you can see that or not but yeah I got that serial tag is gone like I said before seats in good shape got the oil pan right there steering works steering is absolutely amazing on this thing like it takes no effort to turn this uh, turn this mechanism when you're moving. See all the gears right there? Not covered, not anything. Probably should replace this. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, this gear right here. As you can see, the teeth are. See them good teeth right there. And then you see them bad teeth right here that are just crossed to a point. I've been worn down so much. Okay, you got all that. Oh yes, gas tank and PTO extension. I got this PTO extension out from Strumps as well. Goes on that rear PTO down in there, right there. Probably I'm gonna go to the transmission here sometime soon too. But you have that, you have that step. Right there, we'll see if I can move some of this stuff real quick. And you have the gas tank right underneath it, which was probably not a good idea on my part. Oh. Whoop. Oops. Alright, well that's done. I got the gas tank out of Stromps as well. Since the other one that I had before, it was completely had holes in it and all that stuff. It was, it was no good. So, unfortunately, it's an F20 tank, as you can see by that spout right there, that starting tank. But I might go out to Stromps and see if I can find another one to make it as original as possible. See the sediment bowl down there. Should have all that. And if you look close, you probably can't see it because of the light but it says formal and the rust right across there and you can still see the the tag from one of the, the decals right there but you know all that stuff curl bars had gaskets old old oil stuff like that that was out in the shop that I brought in here got that head gasket completely blown to crap the inside of the engine is in pristine shape. It is in really good shape. I mean, it's it's great for how long it's been sitting for. This draw bar right here, though, it has a nice big bend in it. I don't know how or when it happened, but you can see it right along there. Which is unfortunate, but I'll fix it. And the other tube connects the air cleaner, which is down in there, to the carburetor. Need a new one. Oil pan. Black sludge. Nasty. You know. Yuck. Need to clean that. View from the seat. Need to repair that tin there too. I'll show you. But right now this tin is a little on the bad or the ugly, I can't even tell. But there's a nice crack. As you can see right there. Let's see if I can Yeah, a nice crack right there. Which I need to weld up and grind. I need to fix up these tank supports. They're kinda bent and need help. Got the flywheel there again. Got all that there. Oh yes, the that belt pulley does does do work. It does work still. And I'll see if I can put it in gear for you here. 
It's in gear now. As I turn that, that belt pulley will turn. Watch. Let's see if I can show you here. Two with one hand. It does turn. So it's 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 alright. And I like how that's lower to the ground, so it's always running oil. Running in oil. These these old Farmall H's and M's from the 40s, they don't run up with that in the oil. They just have oil splashing on them gears, which it's okay, but not as great as this because this is just continually running in a bath of oil. And the gears on the Farmall H's and M's, they wear down quicker than these ones do, which is unfortunate, but true. All right, so I'll show you my workbench over here all these parts all that stuff got that neat purple power and map gas <laughs> got all the engine parts radiator right there air cleaner bell housing all right this carburetor there are two of them here actually this was a pain to get apart i'll show you the original Carburetor right here the one that was on the tractor and the one that I took off another tractor Which I also got from Stromps But these car this is an Ensign carburetor That's on these far more regulars You can take these apart into three main parts. You have this Part you have that part you have this part And you have let's see the top or This is this part there we go. All right, but, oh, and I forgot bottom part, which houses your needle and seat. There's a seat right there. Sorry if you can't see that really well. It's a little gummed up. I cleaned it up and all that stuff. It's all brass. See that tip right there? It's not going to focus, is it? Sorry. You can kind of see it. Uh, no, it's not going to go. Alright, but... As you see, that's brass. Oh, that's brass. It's in really good shape. Probably be using these even seats again. This was all from the original carburetor. It was actually broken to two pieces. This from this. And it's not supposed to be like that. And one cool thing about these, these carburetors is that there's only one single gasket on this thing. And it's right around where the uh, needle and seat are right there. But you have that, and I just I picked up this other one from Stromps because it's in a lot better shape. It's got more parts on it that I don't have to order online, that are a gajillion dollars. Got your choke rod there, and plate, good shape. Got, let's see, you have this little deal on here for your uh, control of how much air fuel mixtures stuff like that. This, of course, goes on top of that and in like that. Got your nipple for where your pipe comes in for your gas line. Stick that back over there. And then, oh yes, this is the part that broke on that on this carburetor right here. The suction tube, I believe, is what it's called. But the tube broke off right here. It was supposed to be long and connect all this together and all that. Actually, I have the other one right here. This is what it's supposed to look like. See that section right down there. But it's in a lot better shape. I'm going to be using this again. Got your drip pan. Other carburetor, all that stuff, you know. Oh yes, this carburetor. 
had the original brass or the original cork float in it. This is complete. This is very interesting. They used to make these corks out of, or they used to make these floats out of cork, and this one's in really good shape. I'm not going to be able to use it because, well, it's cork, and today's gasoline would just eat the crap out of it and destroy it. But oh shoot. Uh, I'm going to have to get a brass one and solder it onto this little deal right here. This is off the other carburetor. But you can see that's completely eaten away. But I'll have to solder it right onto here to have a working carburetor and that's pretty much all I'll be needing for that. And then spark plugs. These things are massive. To get these out, I had to get a 15 16 deep well socket, and I'll need new new ones, that's for sure. They're all gummed up and crappy, and let's see if I can find my flashlight. There it is. Not good looking. So you have that. You have a new clutch. I got this from Strops, too, off a... Of Another farm wall tractor that was a later model. We have that. It's in better shape than what I had with the multiple disc clutch out in the, the other shop. So, see if I can move this to get where you can see it. Put a flashlight on there. All right. You can see that. I'll show you the multiple disc clutch in another video. Once I get that stuff up here, but there's the clutch. Got your four pistons right here. One, two, three, and four from the front. These rings are in bad shape though. They're all seized up and not in good shape at all. This is the number one. This is that really, really bad one. But Rod bearings look okay. They're on these bags back here. One, two, three, and four. But I'm going to have to take all these rings off, probably break them off actually, and clean these pistons up. And Got your pin in there. But all that stuff. I have new piston rings already. So I'll probably do that here pretty quick. And then these ones aren't near as bad. But I'm still going to replace them because they have a little wear and tear on them. See all that? They're free. Those ones not so much. Some of them are stuck. On that one, I can't tell. Maybe some of them are stuck. But there are the pistons. Okay, let's move on to the head here. Cylinder head first cylinder right there that was absolutely horrible I have all I have it all apart already but as you can see there's a massive amount of pitting and it's it's not in good shape valve guys in there I, I just cleaned it up with a wire wheel on my drill so you see that and then you original these are the original valves Let's see if I can there's one right here but they're ground as far as they can go. There's no reusing them, unfortunately. You can see that there, that edge. They're unevenly ground. Sorry if you can't see that. But, got that there. Got your valve springs. Some of them are squashed down. Some of them are not. I'll have to deal with that at a later date. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but this one is a little taller than this one. So you got your valve springs. Got your clips in here for those valves and springs. Let's see, have all that stuff. You know, I'll show you this later when I work on it. Oh yes, uh, about this, about this head, I know a fellow that was an old international mechanic. He's actually a friend of mine in my 
dad and grandfathers, but he's willing to teach me how to redo valve seats, which is awesome because I don't have a valve grinding machine and I have absolutely no intention on bringing this head to a machine shop to pay the amount and a ridiculous amount of money that would just, it's just not good. It would cost more than this tractor anyway, but I'm not going to deal with that. So got all that. I'm going to use this stuff to degrease the engine. Purple power. I've heard it works good. Got your map torch, map gas. Never use WD-40 ever. Carburetor cleaner. Probably use that to clean all this crap up over here. Got your oil can. Okay. Got my set of files right there. I don't know if you can see back there. That's my socket set. Hammers of all sorts. Channel locks. Tarps. Three prong puller that ratchet and then down here got the new bell housing from Stromps which I also took uh, push rods uh, let's see the felts and troughs from the uh, valves rocker arms and then got one of those handhold covers or actually they're both right there and then you got your uh, rocker arms not in very great shape but I can I can work with them I'll probably I'll wire wheel them down and I'll make them look pretty and valve cover here radiator sports and stuff and you got the radiator right here I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even gonna bother pulling this out right now it's super down in there but it's got the brass core and these this is the bottom tank right here I need to go through it and see if it's worth, uh, or if it's worth worth working on, or might go to Stromps to see if I can find another one if this ain't. But you got that. You got the air cleaner right there that goes far back into there somewhere. I don't know if you can see that. Got the fan shroud right there actually on top of it. But oh yes, and. Sorry if you can't see that. There's the air cleaner. Right there. Then the manifold and muffler is right there behind it. Or right beside it. So, got all that, got all that. And then, well, that's pretty much it for right now. And, uh, if you guys have any comments, please put them down and... I'll get back to you. I'll be really good about that. And actually, I'll show you this crank right here. And watch it crank. Watch me crank. Sorry. It does turn. A little, little stiff, but it's also cold out, so I can see why. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. My phone ran out of uh, storage and kind of ended the video a little short. I was pretty much done explaining of everything about the tractor anyway. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, my email is somewhere on my channel. If you have any questions about anything and you want to talk about it, talk about it privately. But... Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all I have right now. Uh, I will be making videos on stuff that I've been doing on this tra on that tractor. I'll be I'll probably make a video here pretty soon about the carburetor. I'll go through it, clean it, and see if I can't get, drive that uh, crank pin out of the front of the crankshaft and take off that uh, crankcase. So that's pretty much all I have today. Uh, hope you. Uh, liked it hope you like this video hope you like this channel so please like comment and subscribe rate do whatever you want thanks guys see you in the next video